waterboarding, sleep deprivation, hooking up car batteries to your no-no bits. These are just some of the things kids wish they were doing in schools instead of their miserable realities. And not just because kids are stupid and think waterboarding sounds fun. This abuse is happening right out in the open, and no one is stopping it. If you peel back the thick layer of drugs, alcohol, or other intoxicants protecting your subconscious, you'll probably find you're subjected to it too. Or even more terrifying, you actually agree with it. It's a practice so vile, even the torture experts at Guantanamo won't touch it, and they perform non-consensual dentistry for fun. No, I'm not talking about math homework or a science project, though they are undoubtedly scary. I am, of course, talking about Shakespeare. His name sends shivers down the spine and brings even the most outwardly composed adults to their knees. If studying this decrepit playwright seemed like it was designed to make you want to pull your brains out through your nose with tweezers, that's because it was. Know how your shampoo bottle says it wasn't tested on animals? Well, Shakespeare was tested on children, and none survived. They dialed it back just enough to make you want to pry your brains out, but not actually do it. Think about it. Everyone knows people learn best when they are engaged. For topics like math, this can be difficult because numbers suck. But English, or any language class, has limitless potential. Practicing your letters is basically doodling, and story time is even better. You get to leave your boring classroom and embark on an epic adventure. Shakespeare is literally the opposite. It's old, boring, impossible to relate to. It's not even English, but English adjacent, with just enough overlap to gaslight kids into thinking they're stupid. Despite all this, it's cleverly designed to imitate books that don't suck. Shakespeare has plot lines, characters, settings, conflicts, fighting, death, all the things a good story should have, but wrapped in a shit package. It's like biting into an oatmeal raisin cookie when you expected chocolate chip. It says you should like me, fully aware, it's the Antichrist. Who devised such a perfect system for torturing kids into hating learning, and how did they get it in schools? Believe it or not, reading was once the dominant pastime, and not just for nerds. Then visual forms of media came out, like movies and television, and they had difficulty breaking in. Old people hate change, but young people have soft, impressionable minds. While visual media lacked the budget for traditional advertising, it was much cheaper and easier to bribe the government. Since children learned to read and write in schools, they bought the education department. All they needed now was a virus to inject into the curriculum. Visual media opened a lab and gathered orphans to test on. Their goal? Destroy reading and leave visual media the only alternative. To fool the public, their creation needed to pass as traditional reading material, but function as a torture device. They needed to shake up the existing entertainment culture and spear the public's love for reading. Shake and spear? Operation Shakespeare began. Their initial tests were too successful and none of the orphans survived. Thanks to war, drugs, and unaffordable health care, more orphans were readily available. But to be successful, their creation could not be fatal. Visual media needed kids to grow up hating books, not die before they could get jobs and buy movie tickets or cable subscriptions. It seemed an impossible task, but many orphans later, they perfected the formula. A book series in perfect balance. Torturous, but not immediately fatal. Constructed like real books, but not entertaining. Passable as English but near impossible to comprehend. Above all, when offered the choice of book or movie after testing, no orphan chose the book. They had assembled the perfect indoctrination device. All they needed was a cover story. They combined the words in Operation Shakespeare together with an E at the end to add authenticity. A fake biography called him a playwright and made him so old no one could confirm or deny his existence. Any quirkiness was passed off as being the product of a different time, or written to be acted on stage. They instructed the education department to add Shakespeare to the curriculum. 
And to honor Shakespeare by using a cliche, the rest is history. People who claim to like Shakespeare are textbook examples of Stockholm Syndrome. For everyone else, any attempt to change the curriculum would require digging up past traumas. And nobody wants to do that. Until now. I envision a better world where no child is forced to suffer unnecessary torment, where children are unshackled from Shakespeare re-education and free to pursue what their hearts truly desire, working in the coal mines. For just one dollar a day, the price of a cup of coffee, you can help make this world a reality. Save children like little Timmy from harmful Shakespeare exposure. Your generous gift tells little Timmy someone cares. Maybe not his parents or grandparents, but someone. Receive semi-annual report cards to track little Timmy's progress in a post-Shakespeare world and see the difference your generosity makes. Don't let little Timmy be yet another victim of Shakespeare and hate reading forever. Let him read about something cool like Lord of the Rings and escape his bullies or the sounds of his parents fighting and the reminder he ruined their lives. Donate today and give little Timmy the life you never had.